I'm excited to be here this evening with Paul and Debbie Rudoy for our Faces of Temple Emmanuel series. Paul and Debbie, how are the two of you doing tonight? Great, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for making the time and thank you for talking. You know, one of the things that I've absolutely loved about this is getting kind of the home and garden sneak peek into people's homes. And before we started, I was commenting on the beautiful window behind you. Tell, tell me just a little bit more about it. Well, uh, so this is the, uh, the area at the end of our family room, and this blocks off the office that we frequently we work in. Wonderful. Are you working from home right now? Is that part of the deal? Are you able to get in to see people? How are the two of you navigating these crazy days? Well, I, I work from home about a day a week and the rest of the time I head into my office. I do not work from home at all. I'm considered an essential worker and so I go in every day. And remind me, and for those who are just joining us, what keeps the two of you busy during the day? What are those jobs you are finding your way into the office for? Well, I'm uh, the managing partner of H2R CPA, a CPA business advisory firm, about 90 people with offices in Green Tree and Beaver. So this has been a certainly more blessed than many, but this has been a challenging time with this coming off the longest tax season in history with the extra three months and spending a lot of time trying to keep businesses alive during this uh, just unprecedented period of time. And I'm a geriatric licensed clinical social worker. Uh, I work with older adults who want to stay in their home instead of moving to a facility. So I help them do that safely, uh, happily, and uh, keep them healthy while they're there. It is wonderful, and I appreciate all that the two of you are doing to serve the community in this really challenging time. What, what... Rabbi, if I may just add, I have a, a certificate in gerontology, and if I, memory serves me right, you have a certificate in gerontology, correct? I do. When I was out in Seattle, I took some coursework with the University of Washington. Um, I got to do some of my pastoral education at Hebrew Senior Life in Boston, which is Harvard's gerontology affiliate. And I don't know, it just clicked. There's, it's a wonderful group of people. And, um, I don't need to tell you about the demographics of the Jewish community. So it was also a particularly rabbinically savvy one as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. Actually, for me, it's a career change. I used to be in the world of marketing. So I went back to school about six years ago and got a master's in social work because I, I always liked working with older adults. We've been really lucky, if I could mention, too, um, during this whole situation with COVID because um, our children live in Queens, uh, New York City, and um, our daughter and son-in-law actually moved in with us for 13 weeks uh, to get into a, a good, better situation here than in New York City. And so we were really lucky to, to have them here, really enjoyed that. And then just recently, our uh, son and his fiance came into Pittsburgh and we got to spend time with them. So we've been really fortunate to have some good things come out of a tough situation. That is, you know, it, it's remarkable. I'm so glad that they were able to do that and they were able to stay safe. How wonderful to get that time together, right? It is not something that would happen in a quote unquote normal world where everybody's rushing around. Uh, are they now back all in New York? Right, they're all, all back there. So when I worked uh, from home the other day, it was a little eerie because I'm used to seeing our son-in-law Jay stand about five feet away teaching his classes. He's a professor at Hofstra. My daughter who works at NIU being in the in the dining room doing her work. Uh, so uh, so it's, it's a little bit different. Right. And with the rising case count in Allegheny County, were you tempted to go back to New York with yeah. them to stay safe? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think that's why they got out of Dodge just in time. <laughs> uh, so when you are not getting to spend that time with family, what are you doing for fun, either in the world as is somewhat normal or right now? 
Well, I enjoy taking walks, long walks preferably with family and friends. I enjoy uh, listening to audiobooks, doing some gardening, and also uh, trying new recipes. Uh, when our daughter Beth was here, uh, we made some really delicious recipes from the Zaha cookbook, the Israeli cookbook. We did a uh, challah and chocolate babka, and so that was a lot of fun. That's wonderful. We love we love uh, theater and arts and. We, uh, we actually, uh, one of the shows we watched during this period of time, Debbie found in the Jewish Chronicle is a uh, semi-politically incorrect in these times, but it was, I believe it, you'll tell me if I'm pronouncing this right, uh, the Shatar Atov. It was a, a, a Israeli show about a, a goofy police department. But y y you know a little bit, Rabbi, I'm kind of an insane sports fan and uh, um, <laughs> You know, enjoy that. So this has been a, a, a very challenging time to get through this period. But um, and also, I've always felt a need to be involved in the community. My uh, my family, going back to when I was little, was always involved. My father was a past president of the temple and served on probably every committee that would existed. Uh, then my mother was a past president of the uh, what's now called the Women of Reform Judaism, and it was a long time cemetery chairperson. I was on the temple board for about seven years, I believe. And now uh, I have a number of things I do. One is I'm on the on the board of JRS. And uh, I just completed that term. Now I'm on the JRS Foundation Board helping. That's a really uh, important organization. And I'm also on the Bethlehem Haven Board, uh, which helps uh, provide services for homeless women, as well as doing some time for our uh, profession on the international board of our CPA association, as well as some state tax committees. Wow. Yeah, the two of you certainly keep busy. Right, right. You know, so one of the fun parts about what we've been doing is sometimes there's a little bit of confusion between whether a program is going to be on Facebook or a program is going to be on Zoom. There's somebody who is in our Zoom waiting room who I think knows the two of you pretty well. Do you mind if I let Judy in so she might join the conversation? Let's give it a whirl and see whether this turns into a really good or a really bad idea. Time, time will tell, I suspect. Oh. Hello, Sideways Judy. How are you Hi. this evening? Good. Good, Thank good, you. good. I must I, warn you, while you are on with Paul and Debbie and I, this is also going out into the world on Facebook Live right now. And so just be careful what you say. I'm just listening. Fantastic. We're excited, excited to have you here with us. So Paul and Debbie, a, a question about either what you've been reading, what you've been watching, what are... What are some of those things that bring you happiness in addition to those theater pieces you've already mentioned? Well, my favorite books are, uh, the two books our son wrote, Matthew, he wrote a book in high school called Corruption and he made the follow-up story to Corruption called Destruction, which he wrote in college. So those are two of my favorite books. And the other book that I like a lot, it's called uh, Surviving Adversity living with Parkinson's disease. And um, chapter 10 is my favorite chapter because my dad, Irv Popkin, uh, is featured in that chapter. And the book's about people who have Parkinson's who are not just surviving, but thriving. So my dad had Parkinson's for uh, 21 years. Uh, he died 11 years ago. And um, part of my involvement with him and the Parkinson Foundation led to my decision to go back and to become a social worker, uh, working with older adults, in addition to my mom who actually did work with older adults. So those are three of my favorite books. More recently, The Bright Hour by Nina Riggs. Wonderful, and you know, I'm not above a little bit of shameless promotion around here, and I put Matthew's book link into the comment section. So anybody wow. who might want to pick up a copy, we'd ah. certainly encourage you to do so. Thank right. you. Right. That Thank was you. very nice of you. Appreciate that. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so one last question for you this evening. And again, thank you so much for your time. There's so much swirling around this world in which we live, both those, those social causes that you're both involved in, the news of the day, public health considerations. What are, what are some of the pressing issues that you have an eye on? What are, the, what are those things that your, your values either demand action or constant monitoring as you think about how to make this world a little bit better? Well, the, the most troubling thing to me for uh, currently is, is uh, the lack of respect that people have for each other. Um, you know, I've always tried to, I kind of uh, got sucked into the whole Penn State culture. And, and one of the things that always thrived with me was yeah, success with honor. And even a perfect person like you, Rabbi, has a weakness in your college affiliation. But, 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 I, but I've always tried to, to have that thought process, uh, success with honor, and try to do things the right way. And I would rather not be successful and do them the wrong way. Um, sometimes you're able to achieve that, and sometimes you're not, of course. But right now, there there isn't as much emphasis on success with honor, and, and that's my hope as we move forward in the future that we don't have to agree, we don't have to like the same team, have the same philosophies in life, but but respect for other people will increase in the future time and. Hopefully this pandemic has gotten everybody humble a little bit and realized that we're all very similar when it gets down to the end. A colleague and friend on social media recently posted that he was enjoying the fact that people have stopped screaming past one another about politics to now get to scream past one another about masks, right? <laughs> the notion that we've lost a lot of that respect for another or ability to listen. And there's so much more we have to do there. Uh, and to answer your question, one of the things that I'm really concerned about is the uh, social isolation and loneliness uh, for many older adults, uh, particularly older adults uh, who are in facilities now are not allowed for the most part to have visitors. And in addition to that, older adults who live um, at their home, they also are facing a lot of social isolation and loneliness because so many activities are curtailed. Many don't have the uh, computer skills to necessarily access some of the things that younger people do. And so I've seen that even among my own uh, clients there, it's really uh, of concern. It is indeed. And just another plug for anybody who is listening with us this evening, if there are folks in your orbit for whom that is true, who could use, use a phone call from the caring community, who could use the tech support of a teenager who can walk them through various things, who would simply like to borrow a device, please connect them with us. We would be honored and delighted to help out. I'm so grateful to the two of you. Thank you for taking time. Thank you for being part of this FACES series. Stay safe as you navigate this world. Thank you. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Always enjoyable to be with you, Rabbi.